Welcome, I'm so excited for today's video. Just making sure everything is live and working. Live. Let's see. Okay, uh, go ahead and leave me a comment if you are, are hearing everything, just so I know that everything's working, okay? Uh, let me know uh, how your Halloween was. And I am going to double check and just make sure I am reading all the comments. Uh, Joseph, I do have a Facebook page. I also uh, live stream to Facebook at the same time I'm live streaming here on YouTube. So, yes, yes, I do. It's uh, Ashley Marie Cakes, just like, or it might just be under Ashley Marie. I think it's Ashley Marie Cakes, though. Um, okay, there we go. Making sure I can read the comments. Uh, oh, volume down. Okay. Uh, all right, we are. Ready to get started. Uh, uh, so, the first thing that we're going to do today is make the cinnamon swirl bread. Now, when it comes to French toast, uh, there's a couple options for bread. Now, I like to make my own, but you don't have to. You can go with store-bought bread. And what you're looking for is a bread that's not too light and fluffy and also not too thin. Because when you put that type of bread in the egg mixture, it immediately soaks up. And if you don't pull the bread out of there fast enough, you're going to oversaturate your bread. And so that's not great. I like to custom slice my bread. So I like to slice it in about three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. Um, challah bread is really good. Uh, I've even used croissants for French bread. Uh, I just slice them in half, not like slice thin this way. Uh, so there's a couple different breads that are really good, but you're looking for something that's a little bit denser. Now French bread, uh, French toast originally started using a uh, day old bread. So you have that thick slice, it's a little bit crusty, and then the center is still soft and then you soak it and then you get that golden crisp bake on it from frying it. Uh, and then the dried bread also soaks up the egg mixture and it becomes kind of a custardy center with that crunchy outside. So, uh, but I'm going to make my own bread. So I have already started uh, the bread because it takes so long. I have put in warm water at 112 degrees. You want your water between 112 degrees and 115 degrees for the yeast to bloom properly. Yeast and like a teaspoon of sugar. And this has been sitting for about 10 minutes. So we are ready to move on. Um, Sandra, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're enjoying following me. Uh, Chloe, ironic, a nightmare with children doing awful things. That does not sound loud and clear. Great. Thank you so much, Rhonda. Thanks from Lima, Peru. Hello. Hello. Okay. So we're going to start adding. So I have, uh, the flour that the recipe calls for. And this is what I always do with breads. I always add half of the most like the recipes that I I should have this as an instruction. Blah blah blah. Uh, if a recipe for bread does not have this instruction, they have to add all, all the flour at once. I would recommend tweaking it yourself, adding half flour along with all of the other ingredients. Bring this to a nice, uh, a nice base that, that's nice and smooth, and then start adding the rest of a little at a time, depending on where you live and what time of year it is. You might use less flour, or sometimes you might even use more to get the right texture. But if you just always follow the right recipe straight and add all of the flour at once, it'll be a lot more difficult to tweak that later. If it's too much flour, then you have to add you have to try to balance all the other ingredients. So yes, add half of the flour. Next up, we have uh, some dried milk and some uh, dried mashed potato flakes and the rest of the sugar, some salt, and... Oh, some butter. Hold on. It's kind of stuck in there. There we go. And we are going to uh, add the lid. And stir that up. Even though the butter is room temperature and soft, it's still just a little on the thick side. But this is a great base for us to start adding the rest of the flour in. So what I do is I do a quarter cup of flour at a time. 
And keep incorporating that little by little. And you'll hear the changes to your machine as it starts working. Um, and you'll notice the texture changing. Now, right now, it still looks really blah, crumbly, but it's going to smooth out as we keep going. I always turn it down to like one before adding more flour, and then I bring it back up. already it's starting to pull away from the sides a little bit but the sides still aren't clean and that's what we're looking for so we're going to keep going And look how that dough is already just cleaning the sides so beautifully. After making a good batch of bread, um, I barely have to clean the bowl at all. And that is what we're looking for in the bread. So it's still, the dough is still a little bit too textury and we want it to smooth out more. So we're going to keep kneading it until it smooths out. So this will take just a couple more minutes because this machine, my bosh, is a workhorse and it is amazing for bread. that I do with bread after it's kneaded for a while is I pull just a little bit out and see how it cleaned itself off of my thumb even though it was really sticky when I grabbed it. So to easily clean the dough off itself so that's a good luck. So now we're going to kind of pull it and see if it stretches and gets nice and thin without ripping. See how it ripped right there? It's ready. So it's almost there because this stretched really thin before I started to rip. So I'm going to do another just a couple of seconds. see just how much smoother the dough is now. All right, so kind of stick it in my hands. Just give it some taps. All cleaned off, right? So this is a great texture. Grab, grab the dough and pull it. And yes, this is looking great. It's still ripping right at the end, but you know, there's only so much you can pull it thin before it does that. Okay, so this is ready to go. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is let this go through its first rise. Now, most recipes will say to take it out of your mixing bowl and to put it in a greased bowl and let it rise uh, until doubled inside, whether that's an hour or an hour and a half. The timing isn't what matters here. It's the size that matters. If your kitchen is warmer, it's going uh, it's gonna to rise within that hour easily. If your kitchen is a little bit colder, like in the winters, then it tends to take a little bit longer to rise. There are a lot of tricks that you can use. I am dying to get a warming drawer. I would love that so much. I do not have one right now. One of the tricks you can do is you can uh, turn your oven on to super, super low, low at a, uh, like a container of water to keep it moist and not too dry. Then turn it off and you can put the dough in and it can raise faster. I personally love those tricks for getting dough to rise faster. Um, 
I've just never really been as happy with the results as just putting it on the counter and letting it rise in its own time. But I totally understand sometimes you're in a hurry. Anyway, because I'm using my Bosch mixer with my plastic bowl, I actually don't need to pull the dough out because it's not going to stick to this plastic bowl later. So I could uh, pull it out and put it in a grease bowl. That's just one more dough bowl that I'm going to be getting dirty. So I'm just going to put the lid on it and leave it in here and it is going to rise perfectly. And then once it's risen, I'll be able to just pull it. I can take the hooks out right now. Sometimes recipes calls for you to knock it down. And in those cases, I'll leave the hook in and then I'll just use the hook uh, to knock it down. But since I'm not, don't need to do that with this recipe, I'm just going to clean the hooks real fast. And again, that dough should just kind of self clean and put this aside. And I'm going to use both lids to keep it moist. And I made a batch earlier today, of course. Ooh. This batch I did put in a bowl because, you know, I had to use a mixer. <laughs> so this is what it looks like on size. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of flour on my counter. I'm going to cut my dough in half because this actually makes two loaves. All right, put it aside for now and work on this one. Now I just pat this into shape. Uh, you could use a rolling pin but I find that rolling pins tend to really stretch out those bubbles that are in the bread. And I don't like the results as much as when I just uh, pat it into shape. And it's really not hard, right? All right, that is looking good. Set that one there and work on the other. Also, when I'm just patting it into place like this, it's a little bit easier to get a nice rectangle then because I can kind of see where it's thick kind of pat it where I want it to go all right and it's bread and we're going to swirl it so it doesn't have to be perfect okay next up we're going to create our egg wash that we're going to rub on here so I'm going to add an egg a tablespoon of water Two. Beat this with a fork till all the egg and water are incorporated. Bosch mixers, hello, thanks for watching. Uh, Chloe, this, the snitch cake is so easy. Uh, you should definitely give it a try and let me know what you think. Uh, Joseph, I do not uh, accept friends on Facebook that I have not met in person, but you can follow my page. And I actually do a lot more on my page than I do on my personal profile. So, all right, and then we're just going to brush the egg wash on our bread. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we're just going to roll up the bread anyway. We're just wanting to get this nice and moist so that um, the cinnamon swirl will stick. And then as we, ooh, I got a, I got a egg white booger. Egg white booger. Okay, that's the egg white booger is driving me to, Driving me batty. There we go. Good thing. And I wash my hands multiple times. Um, anyway, I don't remember what I was saying. Um, Donna, your feed is not coming in well. Oh no, that's terrible. Um, look, the feed is coming through on my side. Okay. Um, maybe refresh the page and see if that fixes it. Okay. So now we're going to make. Um, our cinnamon layer. So it's some sugar and hold on, I'm opening my big cinnamon container. Um, some cinnamon and that's going to too gooey like the way a cinnamon and mix that up. 
and now you can sprinkle straight from here. You can use a spoon. I'm using my, uh, my dusting wand just because it gives a nice even coating. And I find that when I like pour it from the bowl, I tend to like get really heavy areas and I want this more even. Just do both. It shouldn't take too long. Sometimes if you have something like a finger to hit against, it will come out of the duster better. But again, you don't have to have fancy tools. I just have a lot with them. That's awesome. It's by, um, oh, it is, yeah. I use it for powdered sugar and almonds and sugars, and I use it all all the time it seriously gets so much use I actually ended up buying a second one and I have two now uh, could you use brown sugar instead of white Angela you absolutely could use brown sugar instead of white all it does is change the flavor a little bit um, Xavier you love my channel thank you so much that's so sweet I really really appreciate that okay this is looking good. We still want this to be, see how this, the, the, it's all soaking in and staying moist? That's good because if it gets too dry, it becomes kind of hard to roll up. All right. And then you want to get some bread pans. And I don't know what happened to my nice matching ones, so we are a mismatch set today. You can use parchment paper or baking spray. And again, always over the sink. Now I'm starting at one of these ends. We're just going to roll up the dough. Try not to get in here. You can kind of feel if the dough slips a little bit. When we get to the end, we're going to push it closed. All right. And put it seam side down inside our bread pan. Let's do the same thing over on this side. Just slow. Pinch, 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 pinch. This and the bread pan as well. And now we're going to let this rise for its second rise. Um, for this one, you just want to let it rise until the point that the dough is sticking up above the pan. It will continue to rise a little bit in the oven, so don't wait until it's like super big and exploding like this. You just want it so it's just about here and then in the oven it will bake up a little bit higher. So I'm gonna set this aside. Cover it with a kitchen towel. Let it rise and then we will bake it. All right, I'm going to move some stuff aside real fast. And clean the counters. And of course, I already have some bread finished, so we will move on from there. Wouldn't it be great? You know, they have the um, the robot vacuums. It would be great to have a robot vacuum for my counter. I'm just saying. I can turn it on and keep talking to you. <laughs> Not worry about this. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is. Uh, oh, show you the bread. Okay. So, I when I was writing this, uh, the blog post for today's recipe, I actually decided to do a little bit of research on um, French toast because I've always made French toast. So here is, now this was in the wider loaf pan, my bigger loaf pan, so it's a little bit shorter loaf. Um, I always just cut off the end because I'm not a big fan of heels. And like I mentioned earlier, I like my French toast between three quarters inch and one inch thick. Uh, 
That is what I recommend. That gives you uh, a nice crust from the French toast where it cooks, but it also gives you a nice custardy uh, bread on the inside. Uh, any thinner, and you can have problems with it like heart, and that's just not delicious. Off the variants. Here is our cinnamon swirl, but you can see this last loaf, and that, that's difficult. That normally happens, but most of the time it's sticking together really nicely. So you have two options when it comes to the bread that you've chosen. You can slice it and French toast it fresh, or you can go the more classic way, and that's to actually uh, slice it the night before and leave it on a cooling rack so that both sides can get a little bit crusty, um, and then you'll have the perfect amount of crustiness with it still being fairly fresh bread versus like buying for old bread. As bread ages, it loses its flavor. So I wanted, I, bought, I made fresh bread, and then I sliced it and let it dry out. The other thing you can actually do is put it on that same dark cooling rack and throw it in your oven at like no temperature at all. Um, in fact, if I was going to overnight, that's what I would do. I would put it in the oven overnight just because it will hold everything in versus being out in the air. The other thing you can do is turn your oven on to like 250 and leave it in there for a couple of minutes just till the outside gets a little bit, uh, a little bit dry and then you can use it a lot sooner. You can slice it, dry it real fast and then use it right away. The negative to that is you put it in your oven to like do the whole overnight drying thing and then you forget that you put it in the oven to the dry overnight thing and you turn your oven on to a high temperature because you're going to bake a cake. Yeah, I like made myself toast. <laughs> So I was trying to do the whole like crusty thing and I spaced that it was in the oven and now I have like, it started to toast a little bit. The good news is because it's cinnamon bread, I smelled it and I stopped it before it got too bad. So I have pre-sliced and dried and I have fresh sliced and dried and we will be using both. All right. Now what I want to do is move on to the syrup so that it has a chance to be made and to settle, um, while we make the French toast. So this is just like my buttermilk syrup and just like my coconut syrup, but instead of being made with buttermilk or milk, I'm using eggnog. Um, let's see. So, oh, change the camera as we can. There we go. So you can use uh, your favorite store-bought syrup, or of course, I like to use my from scratch homemade syrup. In fact, that is where I got the idea for this. All right, sugar. It was when I made my homemade eggnog here live. Butter. We're going to melt this. My homemade uh, eggnog live, I asked everybody for suggestions of recipes they like to use with eggnog, like eggnog cheesecake, which is coming to my site probably next week. Um, and a couple other recipes, and uh, so many people recommended, I have like one hair that's somehow getting in my eye. It's driving me daddy. I apologize. Uh, uh, so many people suggested eggnog uh, French toast. Actually, that night, as soon as we finished the live stream, and I had all this eggnog left over, uh, we made French toast that night with it, and it was so good. It has become a staple in our home. Like, we make it all the time. And I am a breakfast for dinner person, so it's this is dinner tonight. Um, all right, so just stir this. And we want that butter to melt. Um, quick tip, when you're not talking to people and you're not distracted, I would put the butter in first. It's easier for the butter to melt if it's on the bottom of everything. Anyway, not that it's super important. Uh, one option uh, is... I can get the right camera. Uh, one option is to also add corn syrup. Now, I know everybody kind of feels differently about corn syrup, but I... This is... Corn syrup you get at the grocery store is not the same as high fructose corn syrup. People tend to think it is, but it's really not. And it has its uses. Uh, corn syrup uh, 
helps whatever you're making not uh, it helps once the you have the sugar melted it keeps the sugar melted versus becoming granulated again so you get a nice smooth finish it also gives it a nice shine I recommend using corn syrup anytime that you're doing uh, candy making so marshmallows and nougats and caramels and fudge and it's great for sugar because I'm afraid the left of this syrup and I don't want it to go all crusty in the fridge and the corn syrup will keep that from happening so just my recommendation I'm gonna get that all shut up Margaret you love breakfast for dinner too uh, Bosch you are right this would be great for Christmas morning and I have started seeing eggnog in the stores already and as soon as I see eggnog in the store that basically gives me permission to make my home so I've already made that this season with many, many, many more to come. One of my favorite eggnog stories, um, uh, two Thanksgivings ago, I didn't have my kids, um, and my s sisters didn't want me to be alone, so they invited me to Thanksgiving. The real reason is they want me to cook everything, which was fine, because I love cooking, and by not having to tear of the, I, you know, being the one adult who didn't have children under feet, um, it, it was fine. It was really fun, and I enjoyed it. So, uh, I brought with me a quadruple batch, quadruple batch of my eggnog. That's 24 eggs. That's like 12, uh, 24 cups of milk, 12 cups of milk. Anyway, it is huge. Like I made it in my biggest saucepan, like stirred it all up and brought it with me. And, um, we got it out before while people, while I was cooking and before dinner was made so people could enjoy it. And all of a sudden we start dinner and we're like, what happened to the eggnog? It was gone. Uh, one of my, turns out one of my nieces had taken those red solo cups, right? Like this big. And she drank like four <laughs> servings of eggnog. She was so sick. She was so sick. Not because the eggnog is bad, but because she just drank too much of it. And because the rest of us were fine. But oh my word, it was so funny. So ever since then, when I bring eggnog, I also bring small cups because it is delicious, uh, but it also is very rich. <laughs> so that's probably my favorite of all of my egg eggnog stories. Um, so yeah, we are just waiting for that to boil. It should not take very long. Uh, Kathy, hello from San Antonio. Breakfast anytime is good. I agree 100%. Uh, Angela, it's very glitchy this evening. I'm sorry to hear that. I tested the feed before we went live, and it was working great for like four hours straight. And then right before I went live, it like glitched once and uh, super annoying. There's not a lot I can do <laughs> at this point. If I notice it being glitchy in the morning, I can like restart all of my internet servers and stuff like that at the house. But once it's live, there's not a lot I can do. You can go ahead and head over to Facebook. It looks like it's working smoothly over there. So I, I don't know what's going on with YouTube today. I'm very frustrated. Um, Angela, are meatloaf pans better than glass? Uh, I, uh, I like metal bread pans, but I also have a glass bread pan. I kind of just use whatever, whatever I have on hand, but I prefer the metal ones. I feel like I get, um, I feel like I get a more even cook. Um, but the nice thing about the glass ones is that you can see the outer crust and see how it's cooking. Uh, Boza, you're a wonderful cook. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless from Australia. I am so jealous. My mom and dad are going to Australia for two weeks in February, and I am dying. I've always wanted to go, and I'm super jealous that they get to go. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on over on YouTube. Um, Facebook seems to be working just fine. So you always have... Um, there's a Christmas morning. Uh, actually, I used the Halloween Baking Championship. You were the top. Uh, you were in the top for two of the recipes in the show. They love them. Can't wait to try them. Thank you so much, Margaret. Yeah, it's really fun when people... Um, it's kind of fun thing to say. Uh, when I, whenever I meet people and they're like, oh, what do you do for a living? And I'm like, oh, I, I, uh, I create recipes and they're like, oh, for, for, you know, for what? I'm like, oh, my own website and blog and YouTube channel, stuff like that. Like, oh, that, that's so adorable. I think it's just so cute. My little of business. And I'm like, yeah. So if somebody's being really passive aggressive with me about it, I tend to like throw in, yeah. And I was on Food Network. <laughs> that's always a fun one to say. But my favorite is to be like, yeah, I have my own show. Too. <laughs> Because the Halloween Baking Championship is on Hulu, so, I mean, obviously, I don't know who's on Hulu, but it's kind of a fun thing to go to, like, the Hulu, um, 
to go to Hulu and would like recommended Helen Baking Championship. And so season one, it tends to be like a picture of my group. So it, that's always just a little bit. That's always super fun. It was a really fun thing to do. And yeah, the really crazy stuff is the stuff you don't see. Like when we're on, uh, when we're on filming and you go in for your review of your recipe, they'll spend actually like 10 to 15 minutes with you. And they'll give you about half really good comments and about half really bad comments. So they have plenty to use later when they're editing. And some of my favorite good comments and some of my favorite negative comments didn't even make it to the final cut of the show. So it's funny being there and then seeing it edited and seeing what made it and what didn't make it to make it, you know, entertaining television. So, um, but no, it was a really neat experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. And all those recipes are on my blog. Uh, you did that last week. You forgot your garlic bread in the oven. Right. I'm glad I'm not the only one. I do stuff like that all the time. I, I think it's because I'm getting older. Uh, June, you join late. Can you add raisins or will it dry out the bread? You can totally add raisins. Um, I would soak the raisins first just so that they're, they have a little bit more moisture in them. Um, but I know some people who say don't soak them first, put them in dry. So kind of a personal preference. I wouldn't like soak them for a long time, um, but just like a slight soak, like a half soak. Uh, Regina, this is your first time watching. Welcome, welcome. Uh, you love cinnamon? Me too. I adore cinnamon. Um, okay, sorry. All cut up. The butter is all melted. And now we're just waiting for it to come to a boil. Look at all those beautiful flecks of nutmeg from the eggnog. Oop, there it is. Coming to a boil. All right, now typically I would want to boil this for about five minutes, but because we're live, I'm going to cut it down to like one minute and then move on from there <laughs> just to save us some time. All right, get a nice good boil going. And that is beautiful. Turn the fan on. There we go. Keep a fan in my kitchen so that I don't totally ruin my camera. Oh, lovely. You guys, I'm such a klutz. I just leaned over the counter to grab my fan and I leaned right into my spatula. Now I have syrup all over my shirt. <laughs> People often ask me why I don't wear aprons. Um, the reason for that is uh, my apron will get dirty, yes. But so will everything else. <laughs> I still touch myself and lean up against counters and I still get everything dirty. So either way, I'm washing my shirt and my jeans. I might as well not have an apron to wash as well. But that's just me. Uh, every once in a while, I'll lean against something that stains like pumpkin and I'll regret not having an apron on. So there is a time and place. Okay, so this is boiled. We'll say for five minutes. Go with me, people. And what you want to do now is take it off the heat. I'm going to... It's always fun to see a familiar name watching. All right, bring this over. Okay, so now this is my favorite part. Let's do the side chop for this one because I love it so much. All right, so now what we want to do is add the baking soda. And this is going to react with the syrup and it's going to be awesome. As you stir this in, it's going to get all foamy and grow. And it's the coolest thing ever. I love doing this with my syrups. I love watching this reaction. Hello, Gogi. Uh, you're welcome for the recipe, Minnie. Kathy, hi. You guys, that's one of my favorite ants. I have two because they're twins. So. so look how foamy it's getting. It grows. That's why I always make sure that I'm using a pan bigger than I need because this is going to happen. So you can keep stirring until the foam goes down a little bit. I'm actually just going to set this off to the side so that we can move on with our recipe. Paul, ooh, eggnog syrup. All right, so next up, we're going to make actual 
um, eggnog. Uh, eggnog French toast. So here is the eggnog itself. Hmm, that seems a little. Now we're going to add the eggs. Now there is egg in eggnog, of course, um, but the fresh egg is going to give the texture that we want for our batter. So, oh, I got a shell in there. I see it. Oh, this is the best trick ever. You guys always use your broken shell to get your shells. It's. I see another one. It's the best trick ever. Uh, my other tip is always use um, room temperature ingredients, uh, including the eggnog. So I got the eggnog out about 20 minutes before we started, just so it wasn't straight from the fridge cold. Um, and the eggs I keep out uh, longer than that. So, okay, let's add. Uh, for the next thing we're going to add is the sugar. Uh, I used to use granulated sugar, but I use powdered sugar now. When you stir it up, granulated sugar, because we're not heating this or anything, so the granulated sugar is not melting, it's going to sink to the bottom. And then you're going to have to constantly be stirring. And by using powdered sugar, it's going to incorporate nicely into the batter, and we're not going to have to worry about that. to the eggnog uh, French toast because there is already vanilla in the eggnog. But uh, for personally, you can never have too much eggnog. I'm also going to add a little bit more nutmeg. nutmeg, of course, in the eggnog. But because we're adding other ingredients like the eggs and stuff, I'm just adding a little bit more. And you want to beat this until it's smooth. Now, depending on how um, granulated your powdered sugar is. Sometimes a whisk is right for the job, and sometimes, um, sometimes a fork is better for that. So, because depending on how big your batch is. I usually make a quadruple size batch because it's so big, but for the smaller size. So. If the batch is smaller, it's better to go with a fork. Now, the next do is you can actually strain this to get out all the egg boogers um, and leaving your eggnog batter, custard, whatever you call it, smoother. Um, I find that the eggs kind of self, or the eggs, the toast kind of does that on its own uh, as you take it in because the, the boogers don't like, don't stick, right? So I don't usually take the extra step to do that, but you can. All right, now we're going to heat this up. So you want your griddle nice and hot, um, and you want to use pancake heat, which is 325, uh, before you get started. So I'm going to wipe the counters really fast while we're letting that heat up, because I got egg everywhere, because I am a messy cook. So we're going to try both the, if you are joining us, we started out by making some homemade uh, cinnamon swirl bread, uh, and then we made some eggnog syrup, and now we just made the eggnog batter for eggnog French toast. Now I have seen some people who just use straight eggnog, just dip their bread in that and fry it. Um, I like the ratio of the dairy and the eggs, so I still add eggs to my French toast batter. Um, also... We also talked about how you can slice your bread fresh and you want to slice it about three quarters to one inch thick for really good French toast. That's gonna to give you a nice uh, coverage to get that crust on the outside as we cook it, but it's also gonna give you some of that custardy sweetness from the soft bread on the inside. Now you can use freshly sliced bread or what is more authentic, and if you like that crunch, bread recommended is like Dale's slice. So I made this loaf yesterday, sliced it last night, and you can they'll get 
a nice crust on this surface, uh, and you'll it'll give you more of a crust in your final bread component. So we're gonna try both and see what I think at the end of this. All right, this is almost hot. My other tip is often I will take uh, butter and put it on my, my griddle for baking this. And as, um, I always tend to get like that burnt butter because butter has such a low temperature point for, for burning uh, that uh, you, I don't love the taste of that. So I've actually recommend using some kind of nonstick spray first. And then if you still want to add butter, you can, but that nonstick spray will kind of help, uh, help and I would add the butter right before adding your bread, and then redo it every time. Um, I'm just going to go with nonstick spray myself. And go with one that has um, a higher temperature, right? Olive oil also doesn't have a great height. I swear I have this one hair. It's driving me patty. Um, you want to go with something that has a good cooking point. Um, okay, so we're warm. This is smooth. Let's get out the tongs and let's hold on and make sure I can still see the batter in this shot. Okay. Oh, something else that I forgot uh, is um, to talk about uh, fat. Do not use uh, low-fat dairy products as part of your French toast. Uh, uh, you want that high-fat content, a better crust, and a better finish. Also, low-fat will just soak into the bread because it's so watery. And you can get that the crack, like crunch to cut uh, texture. So I'm going to do that. Also, uh, if you uh, like, I like to use uh, heavy whipping cream in my normal French toast because of the great ratio that I get of thickness, so it doesn't soak me too much, but it still gives me a nice crust on the side. Uh, if, you are, uh, if you are using more of like a 2% milk versus like a whole milk, uh, I recommend using just egg yolks, because they also have more fat in them than using the whole egg. So, um, but I obviously am using, I always use high in fat stuff for my eggnog. I always get high fat eggnog if I'm buying it, and so this is just fine. Okay, so I have my over, like, sadly over the crust of bread. Stick that in here. And you, depending on how long you have in here will depend on your level of custardy inside. Now, I am not the biggest fan of super soaked bread. In fact, I don't eat, um, I don't do, uh, what's it called? Bread pudding, because I'm not a fan of bread pudding. So, so I need to be more of like a flip, flip, flip sides and put on. But what if you're doing the, the thicker bread and you're do, using slightly dried bread, then, <laughs> then I recommend doing a, a Ross Geller. Uh, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and then pulling it up. Letting the excess drain off really quickly. Putting it in. Um, and I want to say I, I read like... 20 articles about French toast as I was trying to perfect this recipe. And for the end of the day, what it all is personal preference. Do you like yours drier bread, soggy in the middle? Do you like your soggy in the middle and more crisp on the outside? Like you can totally tweak and change all of these to fit um, to fit what you like, right? And that's the most important part is making food that you enjoy. And that's really about cooking food from scratch. If you more about bread, ask to uh, and slice it at home fresh. If they do have one of those machines that slices it for you, make sure to ask for this. You're a flip-flop girl. You don't like soggy bread. And usually by the time I finish the last one on, it's usually a good time for a flipping. You like 
that to Jill or Ross Geller. <laughs> well, Jill, you know you can come over. Probably that one a little longer. longer to put them on than to flip. Um, anyway, uh, are there any questions about this so far? Dan's looks yummy. I love your recipes. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Can you make this as a can? Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that because bread is like is a totally different That would be a totally different, totally different. Let's see if these are ready to. Um, Jesse, that looks so good. Thank you. Uh, do you like Mr. Rogers? Joseph, I do. I'm so excited about the Tom Hanks movie because I love Tom Hanks and I love Mr. Rogers. But I also love the Mr. Rogers documentary. Um, that was seriously so good. I loved it. Um, let's see. I'm sure I'm catching up on all the comments. Uh, are there any other questions? Oh, so for other breads, if you don't want to use this, make your own bread, I recommend chala brioche. Uh, either of those two breads are have a nice like texture to them that I recommend. Um, I have a whole lot of tips over on my site, a lot of the stuff that I just talked about. So um, for a ratio, a good ratio, so that taste too eggy, I do one egg. For a quarter cup of dairy, right? Big nug and um, I lost all the accident. There we go. Excellent. Close that. Uh, all right. Let's see if these are done. Okay. Pull these off. So I like to put my bread um, on the cooling rack is like on a plate so that way there's air on both sides and it doesn't just like get soggy it stays nice and crunchy because um, I like that crunch on the outside of my french bread not like like super crunchy but just nice crunch okay we're almost done with this first round and then we can try a couple of the soft ones and then we can compare them so. my scraper is getting all nasty I gotta scraper and I don't like it. Look, if anybody has a scraper recommendation, this one is driving me daddy. Camera change, or maybe not. <laughs> the camera does not want to seem to play nice with me. Now, does anybody else have a hot spot on their griddle? Mine is hotter right over here and it gets cooler as it goes down the edge. So the ones that are over here on this side always take longer to cook. Uh, Cassie, it looks delicious. You're not sure if you like eggnog. It's been a while since you tried it. Oh, I love eggnog. Uh, you're in need of a new griddle. A good thing Christmas is coming up. Yes. Place my griddle like every six years or so. It looks good. You're going to try it sad like it soaked longer. <laughs> totally can do that for sure. Uh, could you use a sourdough bread? Yes. Yes, you could use our uh, June, you asked about the baking soda and why it's used in this recipe and the caramel popcorn. Um, do I use baking soda in my caramel popcorn? Ooh, a fish scraper. Barbara, that, that is a good recipe. Um, I will have to give that a try. Uh, I have one. Okay. Well, that last cooking, I'm going to do the freshly sliced bread. I can tell that the freshly sliced bread starting in my head <laughs> uh, because they don't have them and they're also different shapes. So they use a pan. Uh, oh, also, of two eggs per quarter cup of egg. Each of those also makes uh, just um, uh, a of bread each. So. We'll stop there. I don't need to cook them all up. Um, June, you know what? I don't know. It's just a, 
I got the syrup recipe from my sister, and that's just how it was. And I got the recipe from my brother-in-law aunt. Um, so, well, I've never even thought about that. Just, it reacts, and it tastes amazing, and so I have just always left it. Okay, I'm going to clean this up a little bit so that we can... Oh, I'm so good at getting messy, you guys. I'll be like, oh, look how clean I turned it. And then I'll turn around and there's like a huge mess someplace. Oh, man, that's not even close. I'm going to try those. Put that aside while we're frying. And we are going to move. Sorry, getting the camera in place. All right, this this again. I'm gonna foam has settled a little bit. Mister it. Um, June, I am assuming it's because of the volume that it gives it, right? It kind of creates an area throughout the syrup and it stays a bigger and fuller and not quite as sickly as syrup without it. Um, just never really thought okay. Look how delicious that looks. And you guys, this smells so good. Everything just smells of eggnog, which is one of my favorite foods. So that works. Now, are you a lot of syrup person or a less syrup person? Uh, Cassie, you've been wanting to try banana French toast. That sounds horrific to me. I hate bananas with a fire. <laughs> but my, my kids who love bananas would absolutely love that. Like with the caramelized banana. Yeah, they would die. They love it so much. Uh, you know, let's go. Yes, please, Barbara. That sounds amazing. Guys, this smells so good. Ugh. Come on, focus. Come on, come and focus. There we go. Oh, you guys. So, are you so good? More custard you're going to be. But you don't want it to be fully, which is another reason that you want a nice thick bread. Mm. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> now you can use, of course, store-bought eggnog. Just find whatever brand you like best and go ahead and use that. Oh, I'm so glad. I guess, which I'm not glad about. I miss that. But I mean, I eat 16, 16 slices of cinnamon swirl French eggnog toast. Um, all right. That is it. We are finished. Everything's delicious. Everything smells amazing. Oh, look at this nice centerpiece. All custardy. Hold on. Come on, focus. This is not like custardy for me. Like, like it's still dry enough. It's holding together really well. It's not like just soaking. But that definitely has oh, that soft. Not soaked, but, but soft filling. I love it. 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 So much. Mm. A slot for syrup. I know, right, Cassie? It's the best part. Um, you always make dark chocolate chip pancakes. I always use mini chocolate chips for pancakes, so I tend to go with semi-sweet because they don't make dark mini chocolate chips. Um, SpongeBob. Hi. Where did you get the sh sugar sprinkler? It's from OXO. You can order it on Amazon or get it in most uh, grocery stores. Uh, greatest times. Eggnog is always the best. I agree. Um, what's my favorite color? Um, kind of depends on what you're talking about. Like my overall favorite color is red. Favorite color on me, like clothing wise is green. Favorite hair color is purple. Um, so, but like overall favorite hair, favorite is red. Um, you need smell vision. Amen. 
Amen, Barker. The first person to invent that is going to be the best thing ever. Bosh, you're so welcome. Thank you for sharing. Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks. That looks so yummy. Can't wait to make this. You guys all like a lot. You blah, blah, blah. So like I'm saying, you guys all lo- like a lot of syrup too. <laughs> tongue twister. I don't know why that's a tongue twister, but apparently it was for me. Dan's. Thank you. It looks so yummy. Okay. Uh, do I have a Bush Noel recipe? Um, I have made them before. There's not a recipe on my site. I will add that to the list of things to make. Uh, eggnog is always best. I agree. All right. I think we are done. Um, so I will wish you guys all the best. Enjoy your weekends. Let me know if you make the French toast or any other recipe on my site. And of course, if you tag me on Instagram, tag at Ashley Marie cakes or use the hashtag, uh, make some awesome or Ashley Marie recipes or any of the, whatever it is, recipes, cakes. Um, I will make sure to share it. So thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for watching. I will see you next Tuesday. Tuesday. I am desperate to have something on a calendar because of the year. So if you have any requests, go ahead and leave them. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.